and left the lonesome place of death. Despite the rage of foes, O oh, brighter than that glorious morn, shall this fair morning be when Christ our King in beauty comes and The King shall come when morning dawns and light and beauty brings. Hail Christ the Lord, thy people pray. Come quickly, King of kings. Come quickly. Come quickly, King of Kings. Come quickly, King of Kings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the God who is, who was, and who is to come be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Christ, Christ. 
Christe, Christe eleison, Christe. for all your people. Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance into his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Justice and peace have kissed. 
Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will dissolve by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of poor persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet Behold, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. A voice of one crying in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to meet him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt about his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. 
And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. The letter of Peter reminds us, and all of these things will vanish in smoke. They will all be gone, passing things. And yet oftentimes, we spend a lot of time on passing things and find ourselves with little time for what endures. It's a tragedy that the situation of our days deeply affects so many things. Families who couldn't gather in the same number. There are those lamenting the absence of something as simple and yet meaningful to many as the Christmas parade here in town tonight. Christmas gatherings will look differently. Concerts, family events, parties, which usually are rampant in this season, are few and far between. And yet, since it's true that God can bring good out of anything, even those things that of themselves are not so good, I believe, and I've heard from a number of people, that that good is already beginning to happen. There are many who say, my celebration of holidays has gone out of control in the past few years. I find myself exhausted in the end and just dying for it to be over. This year it will be different because I have no choice. It's not that we think this is a good thing, but we can see that some good can even emerge. But it will be if it's not just something because we have no choice, but for Advents and Christmases to come, when we're not burdened with restrictions, hopefully we will look back and say, I discovered something. I pulled some things back in the middle. And while now I can add other things, they're not going to replace these things. Because ultimately, Advent is about interior preparation, not exterior. Trees and lights and the such are beautiful. But they're all a sign of what Christians are called to be in accepting the light of Christ and his truth and illuminating it and sharing it. And yet, sometimes the exterior is so time-consuming that the interior passes. The material is prepared for, but what about the spiritual? Meals can be cooked, houses cleaned and decorated, but what about the most important of all Christmas preparations, the soul, that Christ might come more fully with his grace by eliminating those things that close us off to grace? Advent confession is the greatest preparation of Christmas. As we enter this season last week, we can see that there are three elements that go into good Advent living. The first is the virtue of faith. That Jesus isn't just some nice guy from the past, some historical figure. We recognize that he came in history, the Son of God, in the most unlikely and unexpected ways, and that still he comes in the most unlikely and unexpected ways. So the virtue of faith helps us believe in the God who is, who was, and who is to come. He comes in history. He comes in mystery. He comes in the sacraments. And he comes into our very souls in the Eucharist. And he will come again in majesty. And as we pause to reflect last week, the quality of our life improves insofar as we live each day as though it were our last. The Advent season is the time to be sure to reclaim those things that sometimes fall out of sight. The second element is humility. We cannot be lifted up if we lift ourselves up. In her Magnificat, Mary proclaims, the mighty are toppled from their thrones. Near to himself, he sets the meek and lowly. 
John, I am not worthy to untie his sandal straps. Or Mary, at the message of the angel that she is to be the mother of the Savior. Not, well, that's good, I deserve it. Well, good choice. But how can this be? And so we ponder, when was the last time I looked at what God's grace has done in me that I never thought I could do? Is my reaction, how can this be? Or is it often that I did thus and such and God did not deliver what I want? How can it be that I do this and this and he doesn't do this? Advent is a time to discover that we didn't earn it, we don't deserve it, but all is gift. And in humble recognition of that, we open ourselves. And then finally, in repentance, where John says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, not a society that redetermines what's okay and not okay, and so therefore it's no longer a sin. Not a politician, not a group of people deciding. Look to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who doesn't pretend that good is evil and that evil is good. So Advent invites us to focus. In the Collect of the Mass last week, we prayed that we would run out to meet the Savior. I told you, notice the urgency that, you know, yeah, I got to do that. Or you hear a piece of advice or you hear a homily or you read something. Yeah, I got to get to that. The grace that opens your ears to the truth is the grace that, that it meets you to do it as you hear it. And so last week we heard, let us run. Did you hear today's collect? I conclude with it because it's giving us the same Advent admonition. We prayed, Father, may no earthly undertaking. So decorating the house, preparing the food, getting this done, going here, doing that. My agenda, my plan, my way. Father, May no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your son. May we be among them in these grace days of Advent. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In confident faith, 
we bring our needs to the Lord and giver of life. For the church, may our words and witness help those around us to perceive the light of Christ that dispels the darkness of our secular society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to embrace a good and honest confession as the most important way to prepare for Christmas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for all who seek to bring them comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek peace and for all who protect the innocent against violence, terrorism, and deeds of darkness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we carry in our hearts and for all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal joy for all our departed loved ones, especially Helen Highland, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O gentle shepherd, embrace us in your care. Hear what we ask, if it be for your glory and our good, through Christ our Lord. Oh, 
brethren, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. Since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and he opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and all the powers of heaven, we echo on earth the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. When we ourselves had wandered far from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you've bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. And just as you've gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them in the unending banquet of unity, in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will be revealed in Christ Jesus the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, for my divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
take and eat this bread, take and drink this cup. This is my body and my blood. When you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, you live in me and I in you. Savior of all people. Take and eat this bread, take and drink this cup. This is my body and my blood. When you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, you live in me and I in you. The Word of God, the font of wisdom, the hope of every generation. This is my body and my blood. When you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, you live in me and I in you. The God of my blood. When you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, you live in me and I in you. Raised up on high, a fragrant blossom, from Jesse's stem comes our salvation. Take and eat this bread, take and drink this cup. This is my body and my blood. When you eat this bread, when you drink this cup, you live in me and I in you.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you leave the church, you notice in the left-hand corner once again, the Knights of Columbus have Christmas cards available, also the Christmas wafers and the prayer and explanation of that beautiful Christmas tradition. We celebrate a holy day this week, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, our patronal feast day. The mass schedule is in the bulletin. Also a column of Advent opportunities. It was wonderful to see so many of you join us last Sunday for Evensong, which was magnificent, and then Wednesday night, the Rorate Mass, both beautiful Advent traditions in our community. So there's another one for Evensong tomorrow night, and then Wednesday, the Rorate Mass. So consult the bulletin. That column also has daily adoration and confession opportunities. All the details are there. They're looking to Christmas. We thank those who have already made offerings for Christmas flowers. If you wish to do so, there are two tables, one under each station near the confessionals in the back, and there's a basket that has the envelopes to be used. The directives are in the bulletin, and the names of the deceased in whose memories they're offered are included in the Christmas Masses, as noted in the announcement. Also each year, Christmas extra effort appeal is very important. Our parish budget has an amount for that. Since we do not do grand annual collections, uh, the, the Christmas extra effort appeal helps us in meeting the ordinary and extraordinary expenses of parish life. And so we urge you as you think of Christmas gifts to consider all you can do for your community. There's more on that in the bulletin as well. And then lastly, I'd like to thank you for the great spirit with which uh, you embrace the challenge we face this year. Uh, there will be no general admittance to the Christmas Masses, as we've been announcing, as is on our website, uh, and as I publicly announced and put in the bulletin. Admittance to the church on Christmas will be by reservation only, so that we can maintain uh, the, the guidelines we have and afford those the opportunity who wish to come to Mass. Uh, so obviously that can be a burden, uh, and Monday was quite the scene in the office. I was there to heckle them, uh, but Mary Kay and Kathy were wonderful, and you were wonderful. Some folks called, and one mass was already full and, uh, and closed, and they just easily moved to another. So I thank you for the great spirit and understanding you showed. It made a tough day uh, for our office staff who were juggling all the usual Monday stuff. If you have yet to call, Please see the protocols in the bulletin. No emails, no voicemails. It tells you directly what times to call and to speak either to Mary Kay or to Kathy. However, please note that in addition to the bulletin says that the four o'clock vigil mass and six o'clock vigil mass are now closed. They have reached the capacity that we can take. The midnight mass is also now closed and has reached the capacity. So we have two Masses on Christmas morning that still have some limited seated at 8.30 and 10.30. So if you have not called and wish to reserve a space for Christmas Mass, please be sure to check the bulletin and call on Monday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth to glorify the Lord by your life. Ready the 